Some practitioners prefer to cast a patient prone when doing a plaster neutral suspension cast technique. The advantage of casting prone is you can certainly line up the calcaneus, subtalar neutral, and get a much better viewpoint of forefoot to rear foot relationship. At the same time, we find that when a patient is prone and you load the mid-tarsal joint, they tend to supinate their foot. They tend to fire their tibialis anterior and the practitioner may not be able to see this because they're prone. So you have to feel along there and make sure you don't feel that tendon bow stringing. And if it is, you gotta get the patient to relax and try to reduce that supination. Otherwise, the technique is pretty similar to what we do with the supine technique. We're gonna take two strips of plaster. We're gonna dip them into water at the same time so that they cure at the same time. So we dip and we just simply lay that at the edge of the tray so that we can get these started at the same time. And then we're gonna take one of those strips and we're just gonna to begin to uh, rub in the water into the plaster. The more you get that rubbed in and activated, the faster it's gonna dry and the more uniform it's gonna dry. So we're gonna go ahead and rub that in a little before we even place it on the foot. And we're gonna go ahead and hem it again slightly at the top and we place this around the back of the calcaneus just under the malleoli to get a deep heel cup. We're gonna lift and pull that into the arch and smooth it in, no wrinkling. We're then gonna bring the lateral flap over and overlap the medial flap and bring the plaster back up onto the back of the heel, not the bottom of the heel. Take our second piece. This has already been dipped in water. It's curing right at the same rate as the first piece. So we're gonna end up with one cast. Again, we're gonna smooth it in. Now this one's a little more tricky. We're gonna bring it up on the foot. This time, we're gonna start lateral and we're gonna mold it into the toes, into the sulcus and then we bring the final flap from medial. We smooth everything in and bring all your extra plaster into the sulcus, just like we did with the supine technique. No bunching or wrinkling. Everything is smoothed in. We really wanna get that metatarsal impression accurate without bunching. Everything's smoothed in. We have plenty of time here. So now we're gonna go ahead and position the patient. So we're gonna palpate, just like we do when we do a biomechanical exam, we find subtalar neutral. And we're gonna go ahead and push our thumb right against the bottom of the fifth metatarsal head. And we're gonna push up to lock the mid-tarsal joint. Now when we do that, we wanna just feel up here and make sure the tibialis anterior is not prominent. Make sure they're not supinating their foot. Make sure they're staying relaxed one final mold of that plaster, and we just hold them, pushing against the fifth metatarsal. Make sure you load the mid-tarsal joint, and we just let the plaster cure. You might wanna pull gently down on the top of the first metatarsal. This assures that they're not supinating their foot, and it reduces any supinatus deformity that might be there. Now the only drawback, other drawback to this technique is I'm pushing my thumb into the fifth metatarsal head. Uh, this is the only way we can adequately load the mid-tarsal joint. And in so doing, it's gonna leave a little dimple in the cast, which could distort that plane of metatarsals one through five. So what we're gonna do after we get this cast off the foot is we're just gonna push inside the cast and just try to re remove that dimple. This will give a more accurate representation of where that fifth ray actually was. <clears throat> that, of course, is not necessary when we do a supine cast. Uh, that would be an advantage of the supine cast. It doesn't require you to push against any of the metatarsals. Okay, this plaster has hardened to the point we can go ahead and take it off the foot. We're gonna go ahead and loosen it over the top of the foot. And what you might wanna do at this point is just leave that on the foot and go to the other foot and do your casting procedure on the other foot and let this harden even a little more. 
And that way it assures when you pull it off it doesn't get distorted. But otherwise, it's just like the, um, the previous cast I showed you. We just gently pull down on the heel and working from the heel forward, lift it off the foot without distorting the forefoot. Might be hard to see, but there's my thumbprint. And if I reach inside here and push it down, while the plaster is still a little moldable, the thumbprint's pretty well gone. So take advantage of that and do it right after you pull it off the foot, and you've pretty much got a pretty accurate cast of the forefoot relationship to the heel.